Hi everyone and welcome to Club 5 episode 8 of Rolling in the Isles, an FM22 British Isles Journeyman series with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, things have improved a little bit with Watford in our first season in the Premier League. Couple of wins recently, brought out by a, a bit of a tactical change, let's say. So we'll talk about that. And today, we play relegation-threatened Bournemouth. Time for another three points? Let's hope so. Welcome back to Watford. So yeah, it has improved. We find ourselves up in 12th position at the moment in the league table, which is pretty spectacular, really, considering that we were down in 17th a few games ago. And there's been a, a marked improvement since we changed the tactical approach. I'll show you the fixture list first, and then we'll talk about the tactical approach when we talk about what's coming up in today's game. But these are the matches that we've played since you and I were together last for this Newcastle game at the top of the picture here. Uh, we got a 2-2 draw there, but it came off the back of a very, very up and down kind of period. So I felt the need to uh, try and figure some changes. And actually, do you want the truth? The truth is that I made a mistake, I think, in the early part of this season. I came in with a roughly the same tactic that I uh, came up from the championship with. And that was a bit daft. What I would say is one of the, the things that I usually do when I move up a division is that I reset my tactic because coming up from a, di a lower division, often I'm in a positive uh, mentality and I've got an attacking approach and all sorts of other bits and pieces. And I usually then suppress that a bit, take it back to balance, take away some of the attacking intent and just try and um, find a, a middle ground to play from in the next division up and see whether I can then kind of move it from there and find a bit more of an attacking approach as we get better in that league. And I didn't do that this time. That was a mistake on my part, quite severely so. And it led to this run of form that was just not fantastic at the beginning of the season. So we changed it up. Now the formation stays the same, but we'll look at the tactical side of it and how that differs in a moment or two. But you can see the difference in results. We got a 3-2 win against Burnley, which was great. We then beat Away from home, West Ham 3-1, and that was kind of a real catalyst to it. We lost to Man City in the Carabao Cup, unfortunately 2-0, um, and it wasn't something that I wasn't expecting, that was fine. But then we got the result of our season so far. At home, we beat Tottenham 3-0 and very comfortably so. It was a really good performance and I was really happy with it. And then... We had a bit of a mad game against Manchester United. We were 2-0 down quite early on. We came back to be winning 3-2, I think, at one point. And then they decided they'd had enough. In the end, away from home at Manchester United, at Old Trafford, we lost 4-5. We really competed very, very well. Scarlett, Dane Scarlett was the absolute superhero. He got three goals for us, a hat-trick for him, and looked really amazing on that day, in that second half specifically. Um, and although we lost the game, it was such a brilliant, brilliant match. And it was such a competitive game. I wasn't actually too disappointed. So you can see that that led us through to the Huddersfield game. We got a 1-0 win there. Didn't really look great at home. But I think that Man United game had kind of worn us, worn us out physically and maybe mentally as well. So a little bit of a reset for the Huddersfield game. So we won that one though and got the three points. And that's where we find ourselves now up in uh, 12th position or whatever we are because we got those uh, superb wins. Four wins in the last, what's that, six Premier Division matches. That is much, much better. Now we've got some tricky stuff coming up today. Bournemouth they're sitting down in the relegation zone. I'm hopeful that we can beat them, if I'm totally honest, with the current run of form that we've got. Uh, as I've got something on my glasses. Hang on. There we go. Got rid of that. Now I can see the screen again. Uh, but we've got some tricky games after that coming up. Chelsea and Liverpool immediately. Then the likes of uh, Everton, Man City, Brighton, Leeds in there as well before now and the end of the calendar year. I always come back and play the episode just before we go into the January transfer window. So we will next episode be playing that Man City game away from home in the league. We're going to need a lot of luck for it. But for today, we focus on going to Bournemouth. 
trying to get three points. If we go straight back to the uh, competition page, you'll see that they are down in 18th position. They are struggling. They're four points behind Burnley at the moment, but they do have a game in hand. Uh, so let's see what we can do to them today. With all due respect to Bournemouth, can we dent them in terms of trying to get them out of problems? And can we find a way to continue to push up the table? Now, if, and it's a big if, because this is the Premier League, but if we win this game, it will put us higher up into that top 10 of the Premier League, potentially. And that's pretty spectacular. So these are the sorts of games that should be winnable for us, and we've got to make the most of them when we're here. So let's see how we get on. And before we actually go into the game, let's talk a little bit about what I changed in the tactics. <laughs> So the first thing to talk about is actually we've got some issues with injuries at the moment. Uh, Kubelic, Vieira and Malicio are all injured and out of today's match day squad. McNeil just about gets on the bench, but only in an emergency, really, just to fill up the numbers there in an attacking sense, just in case we need it. So it's a little bit disappointing at the moment. Vieira is a big, big miss for us. He's out still for anywhere up to five weeks. He's got a very bad injury. But what I would say is that with Melissio out as well, who is his replacement usually in the shadow striker role, Douglas, who usually plays in the Metzala role, has stepped up to the shadow striker role and has been doing really very, very well for us. In the last five matches that he's played, he's got five assists and a goal for a 7.5 average rating. He's a decent player to have in a couple of different positions and he's covering the shadow striker role really very, very well. So that's really fantastic. So that's the, the major change that we've got a few injuries, unfortunately. So there's a couple of players in here that maybe wouldn't be starting otherwise. I've also rotated the goalkeeper a little bit recently. Bursic, who I think is a really good keeper. If we just go and check in on him, you can see he's also English, which helps uh, in terms of um, just making sure that we've got enough of an English presence throughout our squad. Uh, but he's decent. Uh, and he was a little bit concerned that he wasn't getting too much game time because uh, Mamadashvili, who is also a decent goalkeeper, was kind of keeping him out a little bit, but wasn't playing fantastically well in that early uh, part of the season where we were struggling a bit. So Bursic has come in, Bursic should I say, and has done pretty well and we've been winning games as well. So he keeps his position for now. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the actual tactical style. So the formation and the player roles don't change. They've stayed the same. But we've done quite a lot in terms of uh, taking the attacking mentality, the positive mentality, I think we were, down into balanced. In terms of in possession, we've reset it. It's the very simplest of in instructions. And I've kind of done this a little bit through the other instructions other than in transition a little bit. But we've tried to simplify it. And then bit by bit, we're just going to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it until we get into something that really fits what we've got going. But f uh, for now, this has been working very well. So attacking with the standard, uh, we've got standard uh, uh, in terms of tempo and passing directness. No other specific instructions in. In transition is slightly different because I wanted the counter um, when we get the ball to counter attack them quite quickly and move up the quick uh, pitch quite quickly. But we're not going in for the counter press at the moment. That might come in, but we're just at the moment just trying to keep shape a little bit. We're still going in two different directions a little bit. When the goalkeeper has got the ball, we're trying to go over the top and use them, um, the attacking uh, talent that we have by going over the top in terms of this particular instruction here. But when the, when the ball goes in and around our team, actually, it's a little less direct than that. And that might shorten again at some point just to keep the ball a little bit better if we can. We've slowed the pace down because I feel like we were trying to just chip and charge all the time. Wasn't quite working. And we've uh, obviously added in those long kicks for the goalkeeper. In terms of the out of possession stuff, there's not much to tell here other than we've got a slightly higher line of engagement than the standard that you would set. Everything else is standard. We're trying to just find that middle ground to then work from. And I think it's uh, a wise idea. And it was something I usually do and didn't to, uh, do this time around to just when you move up that league into a new division, just temper your uh, positive and your attacking mentality just a bit 
and try and find your feet in the division a little bit before you go in that direction. So that's what we're doing and it's working. So with regards to that, and with regards to the players that unfortunately are injured at the moment for today's match against Bournemouth in the Premier League, we go with Bursic in goal, Mendes at right back, Foul on at left back, Collins and Ryan in central defence, Nakai, Kamara and Mosquera in central midfield with Douglas in that shadow striker role and ahead of him, Kyo George and Scarlett and a whole bunch of people on the bench ready to make an impact if we need them to. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. It feels like t today's match might be one where I can be a little bit more forceful with my players just to say, I expect you to do something here. So we pointed the finger and actually said to them, I expect a win tonight, even though we're away from home. But Bournemouth's run at the moment is not particularly solid. We're doing fairly well, and I feel we've just got to keep that momentum. So Bournemouth come in with their 4-3-3. We are in our slightly narrow 4-3-1-2, and we'll see where the gaps arise from and see whether we can make um, an advantage count in that centre of midfield. Maybe we could do that, and we'll see what happens there. Um, but there's the table. Bournemouth down the bottom. We're in mid-table currently. Could potentially move higher up into that top 10 with a good result here, maybe, uh, or maybe just outside it, we'll see. But we've got to go and perform well, so let's see how we get on. So early doors here, seven minutes in, and there's a couple of shots for Bournemouth, not on target, nothing else. And here's the first highlight, and it is Bournemouth down this left-hand side. They get a chance to put the cross in. They didn't take it the first time, and we actually sorted that one out fairly well. Got a little bit lucky with the goal clearance, but... In the end, we made that work for ourselves as well and have moved up the pitch. And there's the shadow striker through again. And Douglas is a really good player. We've got two or three players that can play that shadow striker role pretty well. So it doesn't seem to harm us too much when we've got a bit of a knock there to Vieira, who I would have said was absolutely key to our team before he got injured. Uh, but we're looking pretty good on it. And that's the benefit of that shadow striker role. If you get the right um, player roles around them and the right setup around them, it's quite lethal this time around. Let me know. Do you use the shadow striker at the moment? Are you finding that attacking midfielder is uh, a little bit overpowered maybe in the setup that you've got? Let me know how that works for you because it's really, really working this year for me in FM22 with that shadow striker role. So 10 minutes to go till half time. It's been quite a quiet game. We've literally had one shot at goal, one shot on target. Well, now two shots on goal, but we've got a goal from it. And we go in 1-0 up at half-time. So Bournemouth, I guess, could feel a little bit hard done by. But it was a very, very well-taken goal by Douglas in that shadow striker role. So into the dressing room we go. Uh, I don't want to change anything about what we're doing. So we're going to go hands together. Don't get complacent out there. It seems to demote a couple of players, but mostly that motivates them. I'm not sure how you can be demoted by somebody saying, let's stay focused, shall we? <laughs> but there we go. We're not going to actually do a shout at the moment. We're just going to see how this second half starts. Uh, you'd imagine Bournemouth are going to want to come out of the traps quite quickly. And they've pinned us in a little bit here, early stages. But we managed to break free again. And Douglas... Just didn't quite get that uh, move right, but ultimately Scarlett made the most of it. Defensively, they uh, dallied on the ball a bit. And there's a good opportunity from a free kick from Douglas, I think, putting it into Scarlett on the far side, header over the top of the bar. So there was a little sign at the beginning of the second half where I thought that maybe they were going to pin us in, cause us some problems and really uh, not allow us to get out. But that's not been the case. A couple of times we've broken out of that, had a couple of half chances we need to kind of make another one count if we can, just to get ourselves a little bit of a gap going. And the corner comes in and we lose possession off the corner kick. They head it clear and win the loose ball. And uh, Lainez has managed to get it right the way down into our box. I don't know what to say about that, other than I'm a little bit disappointed. They get a goal. Lainez gets a really good run down that left-hand side. Nobody goes out quick enough to go and close him down properly. And then passively, he, he just drifts past our guy. And for whatever reason, there's some problem with man marking in that penalty box at that moment as well. Nobody was sniffing out the danger. And they get a, a, 
an okay position to shoot from. It was a very good finish. But the defense uh, was just really non-existent. Not happy about that at all. So we paused the game. 71 minutes in. We're now back to 1-1. One, one. Got to go and find, uh, go again, really, and find a way to try and break through. Um, so you can see where we're struggling a little bit. The two strikers not having the best of days, to be honest. Uh, so that's something that we need to think about. And then also we've got uh, Nakai, for example, who's out on his feet in midfield as well. So he's going to be the first person we have to take out. Uh, what am I going to do to change this round? Uh, I think we'll bring Giabi in and he can play in that role. Well, actually, what we're going to do is switch him and Mosquera around, I think, uh, and just get them to play those roles slightly differently. And then we're going to take our strikers off, unfortunately. Kayo George comes out for Soto and Kyo George has been a little bit quiet recently not quite at his best Scarlett has been on good form he had those three goals against Man United remember but in today's match got involved with a couple of chances didn't quite take them so McNeil comes in for him to finish off the game we're not going to change the tactical style just at the moment but what we are going to do is go in into the shouts uh, and fire them up for the last sort of 20 minutes of the game 15-20 minutes if in the next four, sort of five or ten minutes we haven't created any chances we'll up the intensity a little bit and that is coming so nothing has happened unfortunately since we made those changes so we're going to have to go and do this through instruction so let's push up into the attacking now uh, in possession we're going to uh, keep the standard passing length but we're going to up the tempo um, we are going to shoot on sight get that particularly um, going I think we'll slightly narrow our um, our attacking width as well. In transition, now we'll put the counter press on and see if we can pin them back a little bit. And we're going to distribute quickly now rather than take our time. And then the last one, out of possession, we're going to push the high line right up and then higher line in the defensive unit as well, preventing the short goal kick. And then we'll have to increase the trigger on the press as well. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I mean, this may or may not have any impact for the next five minutes. Usually you do these changes and nothing happens and then the final whistle goes. So we'll see whether we can do any better than that. But that, that, that goal for Bournemouth was just a little bit disappointing when we were always on a bit of a knife edge with a one goal lead. We've got a chance though. McNeil gets through a really fantastic defensive block. And they get the ball cleared. But there was a slight chance. Can we create one more? It looks not. There's the full-time whistle. It's kind of what I said, wasn't it? You make these changes and the game doesn't really seem to reflect that too much. There didn't seem to be the intensity in that last five minutes to properly go and hunt them down and cause them the problem that maybe we should have. We got a point. It's not a bad point. Or is it? I mean, it's Bournemouth, with all due respect to them, and they're in the relegation area. We probably should have done slightly better, but away from home, we'll take the point. It keeps us moving forward in a positive manner. And there were some good performances in there. I mean, the defensive line looked pretty solid most of the game, and Douglas is looking great. A couple of bits around that not quite working out for us today, though. But there we go. That happens sometimes. So in the end, the point wasn't quite enough to get us into that top 10. But we're in 11th. We've moved up again. We're still really, really connected to the teams that are directly above us, the next three or four teams. But I mean, there's some big teams in there and we've got some big games coming up, as we've already talked about in this episode. If we go back to the schedule, the next two matches, Chelsea at home, Liverpool away. Then we've got Leeds who came up with us. So there's a little bit of competitiveness there. And then Brighton and Everton before you and I come back for the last game of the calendar year against Manchester City away from home. It's going to be a real tricky run, this one. But hopefully, if we could get maybe a point somewhere in, in the Liverpool-Chelsea games and then uh, maybe let's, let's go for four to six points between Leeds, Brighton and Everton. And then who knows what we could get against Man City. Possibly nothing, possibly something. We'll see. But if we go back to the table, it makes for very interesting reading. I mean, at the moment, Arsenal sitting top with the likes of Leicester and Newcastle and Wolves in the top five. So, I mean, the likes of 
Everton that we've got coming up. We've got um, the likes of Man City, Liverpool are sitting just outside that top five at the moment. So they're not quite up to where they maybe are expected to be from you and I looking in on the real Premier League uh, in, in real life at the moment. So who knows what we can achieve against them? We're going to have to find out. We might have to do things the hard way. Let's see how we get on. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you for joining me. It was a disappointing result in some ways, but we continue to move forward and we're doing pretty well overall, I would say. So thank you for joining me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That will help me get seen by more people. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.